Shalom, family Messiah Yeshua. Shalom to the worldwide YouTube and social media community. This is your beloved brother Shaul Yisrael coming back again with another Yahweh inspired message. I'll be reading from the book of First Timothy, chapter 4, the starting at verse 1. First Timothy, chapter 4. The starting at verse 1. Again, verse Timothy chapter 4. The starting at verse 1. And I read. Now the Spirit speaks expressly. That in the last days. Some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits. And doctrine of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having the conscience seared with a high iron. Forbidding to marry. And commanding to abstain from meats. Which Yahweh has created. To receive with thanksgiving, then we believe and know the truth. For every creature of Yahweh is good, and nothing to be refused, if we receive with thanksgiving. For it is set apart by the word of Yahweh in prayer. See, when Brother Shaw said that every creature of Yahweh is good, he's referring to those creatures that Abba Yahweh has permitted and sanctioned for us. As his set apart people to eat. And the foods that Yahweh has sanctioned are for us to eat and partake of is outlined in the Vegas chapter 11. And starting at verse 1, these are the foods. The, 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 these are the foods that Abba Yahweh permitted for us to eat and the foods that Yahweh has permitted for us not to eat. Leviticus chapter 11 for when the scripture says every creature of Yahweh is good Yahweh is referring to those creatures that Yahweh has sanctioned and authorized for us to eat and partake of. Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 1 and Yahweh spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on their rests. What sore parts the hoop, and is cloven footed, and chew the cud among the beasts that shall you eat? Nevertheless, these shall you not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the hoop, as the camel. Because you choose the cud, but divides not the hoof, is unclean unto you. And the coney, because you choose the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because you choose the cud, but divides not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the swine, though he divide the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he choose not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh shall you not eat, and their carcass shall you not touch. They are unclean to you. These shall you eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall you eat. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and of every and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. They shall be even an abomination unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, but you shall have their carcasses an abomination. Whatsoever has no fins nor scales in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. And these are they which you shall have in abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ossifrich and the osprey and the vulture and the kite of this kind. Every raven of this kind. And the fowl and the owl and the nighthawk and the cuckoo, and the hawk at this kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, 
and the pelican, and the deer eagle, and the stork, the heron out of her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat, all fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Yet these may be, yet these may you eat of every flying creeping thing that goes upon all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap will fall upon their rest. Even these of them you may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creeping things, which have four feet, shall be an abomination unto you. And for these you shall be and for these you, you shall be unclean. What, whosoever touches the carcass of them shall be unclean until the evening. And whosoever eats and, and whosoever bears aught of the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. The carcasses of every beast which devise the hoof and is not clothed for them, nor choose to cut, are unclean unto you. Everyone that touches them shall be unclean. And whatsoever goes upon his paws among all men of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean until the evening. And he that bears the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. They are unclean unto you. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creepy things that creep upon the earth, arets, the weasel, and the mouse, and the tortoise at this time, and the ferret, and the chameleon, and the lizard, and the snail, and the mole. These are unclean to you among all that creep. Whoso does touch them when they be dead shall be unclean until the even. And upon whatsoever any of them when they are dead does fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be any vessel of wood, or raiment, or skin, or sack, whatsoever vessel it be, when any work be done, it must be put into water. It shall be unclean until the evening, so it shall be cleansed. And every earthen vessel, whereto any of them falls, whatsoever it is in it, shall be unclean and you shall break it of all meat which may be eaten that on which such water comes shall be unclean and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean and everything whereupon any part of their carcass falls shall be unclean whether it be oven or rages or pot for pots they shall be broken down for they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. Nevertheless, a fountain or pit, wherein there be plenty of water, shall be clean. But that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. And if any part of their carcass fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown, it shall be clean. But if any water be put upon the seed, and any part of their carcass fall thereupon, it shall be unclean unto you. And, it, and if any beast of which you may eat die, he that touches the carcass there shall be unclean until the evening. And he that eats of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. He also that bears the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And every creeping thing that creeps upon their rest shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatso goes upon the belly, and whatso goes upon all four, or whatso has more feet among all creeping things that creep upon their rest, then you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. You shall not make yourself abominable with any creeping thing that creeps, neither shall you make yourself unclean with them, that you should be defiled thereby. For I am Yahweh your ill. You shall therefore set yourselves apart, and you shall be set apart, for I am set apart. Now you shall you devour yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon their rest, 
For I am Yahweh that brings you up out of the land of Mizraim to be your El. You shall therefore be set apart, for I am set apart. This is the law of the beast, and of the fowl, and of the living creature that move in the waters, and of the living creature that creeps upon the rest, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So, the every creature of y'all that's good are those clean foods that Yahweh had deemed clean. And those foods that are unclean are not to be eaten, for they're an abomination. If you partake of unclean foods, you are unclean. And if you're unclean, mean you're defiled your vessel. And Yahweh instructed us, if you defile your vessel, he will destroy you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Which is in you, which you have of Yahweh, and you and you are not your own? For you are bought with a part of for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify Yahweh in your body. And in your spirit which are Yahweh's. So when you defile your temple. You are un- you're making your temple unclean. When you make the temple unclean. He will destroy your, te- your, your temple. So. The dietary instructions. As. Cited and itemized. In Leviticus chapter 11. And Deuteronomy chapter 14. Are to be observed. Those who do not observe the dietary instructions, those who eat unclean per the instruction of the dietary law, you defile your vessel. You make your vessel uninhabitable for the spirit of Yahweh. For the spirit of Yahweh cannot reside in a vessel that is subject to transgression of Yahweh's law. Now, what about the instruction that Yeshua gave? That what goes into the mouth and into the belly goes out of the draw. We said that what goes into a man does not defile him, but what comes out, because it comes out of his heart, that defiles him. That does not contradict Yahweh's dietary instructions. But when Yeshua said that what goes into a man's comes out of a man's heart defiles him refers to sin because sin originates with the will of man. So when man chooses to exercise his will he chooses to exercise his will to act in opposition to Yahweh's law which instructs us concerning what foods to eat and what foods not to eat it is still commanded of Yahweh for us to observe the dietary instruction as outlined in Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14 so if you're eating unclean contrary to the instruction of Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14 then you defile your vessel you make your vessel uninhabitable for the spirit of the living El Yahweh so if you are a scriptural believer if you seek to follow Yeshua as he followed our Yahweh, then we'll be subject to every word of Yahweh. And in being subject to every word of Yahweh, we will observe the dietary instructions. As out, outlined in Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. This is the instruction of the Spirit of Yahweh. You must observe the dietary instruction and outline in Leviticus chapter 11 
and Deuteronomy chapter 14. If you eat unclean and contrary to the dietary instruction, you defile your vessel. You make your vessel uninhabitable for the spirit of the living El Yahweh. Yes, that would come out of the heart, defiles you. But what comes out of the heart is the will to transgress the law of Yahweh. So, from your heart, one chooses to violate Yahweh's instruction not to eat unclean. Yahweh has instructed us what foods to eat, what foods not to eat. Again, Yahweh has instructed us what foods to eat and what foods not to eat. As written in Deuteronomy chapter 14. The second place where, where Yahweh has instructed us pertains to what foods to eat and what foods not to eat. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and starting at verse 1. You are the children of Yahweh your El. You shall not cut yourself nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. For you are a set apart people unto Yahweh your El. And Yahweh has chosen you to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon their rest. You shall not eat any abominable thing. These are the beasts which you shall eat, the ox. These are the beasts which you shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat, the hart, and the roebuck, and the fallow deer, and the wild goat, and the pygarg, and the wild ox, and the chamois, and every beast that parts the hoof, and, and cleaves the cleft into two claws, and choose to cut among the beasts that you shall eat. Nevertheless, these you shall not eat of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel, and the hare, and the coney, for they chew the cud, but divide not the hoof. Therefore they are unclean unto you, and the swine, because it divides the hoof, you choose, yet choose not the cud, it is unclean unto you. You shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch the dead carcass. These you shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall you eat. And whatsoever has not fins and scales you may not eat. It is unclean unto you. Of all clean birds you shall eat. Of all clean birds you shall eat. But these are they of which you shall not eat. The eagle and the ossifrage and the osprey and the greed and the kite. And the vulture at this kind, and every raven at this kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cook owl, and the hawk at this kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the jeer eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron at their kind, and the lapwing, and the bat, and every creeping thing that flies is unclean unto you, they shall not be eaten. But there, but, but all clean fowls you may eat. You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. You shall not give it unto the stranger that is in your gates, that he may eat it. Oh, read, read it again. You shall not eat of. You shall not eat. You shall not eat of anything that dies of itself. You shall you shall give it unto the stranger that is in your gates, that he may eat it, or you may call may sell it unto an alien, for you are and sell about people unto Yahweh your El. You shall not see the kid in his mother's milk. You should So the dietary instruction in Deuteronomy 14 is outlined in Deuteronomy 14, chapter 
14 from verse 3 all the way to verse 21. So Yahweh has given us instru- clear instructions what we can eat and what we cannot eat. He has given us clear instructions what we should not eat and what we can eat. If you are a believer in, Yah- in Yahweh, you will faithfully observe Yahweh's dietary instructions. Don't give heed to those ministers who twist the scriptures to attempt to persuade you not to observe the dietary instructions. For the dietary instructions is part of every word of Yahweh. And if we are to be saved, we must faithfully observe every word of Yahweh. Now back to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having the constant seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry, marry and command to abstain from meat which Yahweh has created to be received from thanksgiving they will believe no truth. See, Yahweh has created the clean foods. Yahweh created clean foods to be received for thanksgiving. Yahweh has ordained that, that every creature of Yahweh that is good are the clean foods. That every creature of Yahweh that is good are the clean foods. And that every creature of Yahweh that is not good are the unclean foods. And they are outlined in Leviticus chapter 11 and Deuteronomy chapter 14. If you are a believer in Yahweh and you are obedient to every word of Yahweh, you will faithfully abide by the dietary instructions as outlined in the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and Luke chapter 11. If you're eating unclean, such as eating pig, eating bat, eating gator, you defile your vessel. That's why many of us have high blood pressure and diabetes because in time past we have, even yours true, have eaten unclean. And now that Yahweh has granted us to understand that we should not eat unclean, but we should eat clean. Now we have to patiently wait on Yahweh to undo the effects of the unclean eating. So be wise and obey Abba Yahweh's instructions concerning clean and unclean meats. Faithfully observe Yahweh's dietary instructions. Don't be rebellious. Don't be stubborn. Why the fire your vessel? The word of Yahweh. Are to be is to be observed in its entirety. The law given by Moses is still binding upon all who believe in Abba Yahweh. If you have been reconciled unto Yahweh by way of the new birth, according to Acts 38, then you are under obligation. And under mandate to observe every word of Yahweh. That includes Yahweh's feast days and his dietary instructions. Where we're not to get comfortable here in the nations of this earth. 
but we are to seek for to enter the blessed kingdom of Abba Yahweh. For when Yeshua HaMashiach returns, he's returning for war to bring down the nation of the Eretz and to establish his rulership on this Eretz. So we are to come out of Babylon. Come out, forsake her ways, forsake her worldview, her ideology, and the worldview and the ideology and the ways of ba Babylon is self will. So we are to continually deny our will and submit ourselves unto the will of Yahweh. If you want to be found pleasing of the Yahweh, you must be obedient to every word of Yahweh. In order to be able to endure the present suffering, adversity, and difficulty, you must be one with Yahweh. And in order to be one with Yahweh, you must be born again. Without the new birth, without the new birth, you cannot serve Yahweh. Without the new birth, you will not be able to survive the coming judgment that shall befall the United States of America. Without the new birth, you won't be able to survive the rise of the anti Messiah. Because the purpose of the new birth is to give us a renewed nature that is alive unto Yahweh. And to give us a renewed spirit that is now in fellowship, harmony, and oneness with Yahweh. See, the renewed man or the reconciled man, which is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is our example showing us that in order to please Yahweh and to serve Yahweh we must be reconciled unto Abba Yahweh. So in order for us to serve Yahweh we must be engrafted into the renewed man Jesus the Messiah. And to be engrafted into Jesus the Messiah to be born into Jesus the Messiah you must be born again. And there's only one way to be born again. That is by way of repentance and word of baptism in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for the pardon of sins and the regeneration of your soul. And you must receive the blessed baptism of the Holy Spirit as initially evident by speaking in another tongue as Yahweh permits one to speak. In order to serve Yahweh, you must be born again. In order for your observance of the feast days to be worthwhile and acceptable before Yahweh. In order for your observance of the diet instruction to be acceptable before Yahweh. You must be born again. And to be born again you must obey Acts 2.38. We are in the time of judgment. So it's time to quit playing around. It's time to prepare your soul for persecution, hardship, and great adversity. Be prayerful. Cultivate a preparedness mindset. 
for hard times coming. Remain obedient to every word of Yahweh. For in our obedience to Yahweh's law is both our power, our strength, and our acceptance and approval unto Yahweh. The choice is yours. O Yahweh, in the name of your beloved Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, I thank you for another opportunity to speak for your word of truth. Thank you for granting some wisdom revelation and understanding of your word and the boldness and the fortitude to speak it. I beseech you, O Yahweh, that you continue to draw chosen souls whose heart you have opened that they may have your word sown into their heart. That you may produce abundant fruit. I beseech you, O Yahweh, that those whom you, whom you have not chosen, that you allow your word that is preached and taught to grant them a witness of damnation against them. And to arouse in them, in them the spirit of damnation. That may drive them further and further away from you. Continue to grant us strength, O Yahweh. Wisdom, fortitude, and patience. Prepare us, O Yahweh. I give your name glory, honor, and praise, O Yahweh. So be it, so be it. Remember, family, please show your support to your beloved brother, servant, by seeing a donation to my cash app or PayPal, or send a donation to Western Union or MoneyGram. Remember, it is the obligation of the people of Yahweh to support the work and the workers of Yahweh. I pray that all who are sincere and humble and thankful unto Yahweh, please show your support by sending a donation to your fellow labor and your beloved brother. May Yahweh bless all that will hear and receive the word of truth. May Yahweh bless all that will allow the spirit of Yahweh to direct and to stir them to love and good works. Love y'all family. Shalom.